Hello everybody, my name is Chris Brady, author of the Boeing 737 Tech Guide and the Boeing 737 Tech Site. And this uh, mini presentation is about electrical bonding on the, the Boeing 737. Okay, so why this presentation? Well, it's quite topical. On the 9th of April 2021, Boeing issued the following press statement. It's titled, Recommendation for Potential Issue for Some Boeing 737 MAX Jets. Boeing has recommended to 16 customers that they address a potential electrical issue in a specific group of 737 MAX airplanes prior to further operations. The recommendation is being made to allow for, for verification that a sufficient ground path exists for a component of the electrical power system. We're working closely with the US FAA on this production issue. We're also informing our customers of specific tail numbers affected and we will provide direction on appropriate corrective actions. Well, what we know is that 90 MAX airframes are affected by this, and that's approximately a fifth of the global MAX fleet. And draw attention to the, uh, to the line in the, in the first paragraph there, that this should be addressed prior to further operations. So these aircraft are actually grounded until, until they're fixed. Okay, so let's talk about electrical bonding then. Um, the issue, as Boeing said in their, in their statement, was, is one of poor electrical bonding. Now, what we know, or what's come out since, is this is due to flaws that were traced to a manufacturing change that was actually made back in early 2019 involving fasteners and a coating. Now, I should say that this problem is absolutely unrelated to MCAS or any other previous MAX problem. But it's probably made the headlines because of this this recent history. It's it's just unfortunate that the Max is very much in the spotlight, and any issue, uh, no matter how minor, will will make the headlines be, because it's a Max. So we know the issue involves fasteners and a coating. Um, in some situations, a coating. Now that may be paint or or it may not be paint. I mean we, we, we don't know yet, but but it's certainly true that, that a coating such as paint can affect the electrical grounding path, which in turn could cause the, the component to, to malfunction under certain circumstances. The manufacturing change which uh involved the fasteners and the coating. It involved a change of supply for the fasteners, but since that change was considered so insignificant, the change didn't have to be approved by the FAA. So yes, this was done without FAA knowledge, but th there was nothing, let's say, unethical about that. Um, as a prima facie, that this appears to be an, an honest mistake, which is uh, the, the implications of which have, have, have just been unearthed. All right, the first component identified as, as being affected is the standby power control unit. And this unit, which you can see on the photograph there to, to, the, to the right, is, is new, was new to the NG, um, but it's also present on the Max. So it, it, it wasn't there on the originals and classics. It, it, it came in with the NG. And this, this unit controls the standby power distribution. And as you can see by the values on some of those circuit breakers there, we, we, I mean, just looking at them, there, there are two there at 35 amp and six at 25 amps. It carries some very high currents, hence the need for, for, for particular need in this case, for, for, for good electrical bonding. This unit, if you can't quite work out where it is, it's, it's on the P6 panel behind the FO seat. Now it's since emerged in, in the last week or so that there are two other areas of concern. The, the storage rack that holds this uh, standby power control unit and also um, perhaps surprisingly the main instrument panel. Um, so I, I would say it's quite possible that as it's not confined, the issue is not confined to that one area, it, it could be con other areas could come to light as well, but it, it very much de depends on the um, on the extent of the the manufacturing change back in in 2019. 
All right, so a quick word about uh, bonding fasteners. Um, first off, it, it's not yet known what type of fasteners or indeed what type of coating caused the problem. But let's have a look at some of the fasteners used on the 737. Now the, the, the common ones are, are things called the Cherry Max, which is, you can see, illustrated on, on the right there. Um, Highlock, Zeus, and then bog standard rivets and screws. They're, they're all forms of fasteners. Um, now, which particular ones were, were in use on the on the standby power control unit? Uh, I we we don't know. Certainly, on the on the face of the standby power control unit, it just looks like screws. But what's going on inside for for for, for bonding? Um, I I don't know. Now, all units um, on on the aircraft and on on every aircraft and 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 panels are bonded to the trays or or the racks they're housed in which are in turn bonded to the airframe um, and and this is, is for the following reasons. Now this is taken from, from the FAA's uh, fine document AC43 um, and from an extract on the aircraft electrical systems and it says one of the more important factors in the design and maintenance of aircraft electrical systems is proper bonding and grounding. Inadequate bonding or grounding can lead to unreliable operation of the systems, e.g. EMI, which is electromagnetic interference, electrostatic discharge damage to sensitive electronics, personnel shock hazard, or damage from lightning strike. So th there are co some quite serious implications here for, for, for components not being bonded. And certainly if it's, if it's the standby power control unit that that is susceptible to this, then that is a particular concern, as that's kind of the last line of defense of, of electrics if, um, if, if the other systems uh, fail. Um, while we're talking about bonding, um, and, and this is not actually the, 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 the issue with the, with the recent grounding of, of, of the MAX, but, but while we're talking about bonding, let, let me just take this opportunity to mention to you bonding jumpers. Um, and these are generally used in components that that are moving. So th this particular example I, I I've shown you here, this photographs of the of the nose gear door, or one of the two nose gear doors, and the the hinge is bonded, electrically bonded there, and you can see it highlighted in the red circle to the airframe. Now I took this photo of um, of a bond that was made um, because I'd actually snagged on a on a uh, pre-flight inspection to, to an engineer that one of these um, bonding jumpers had broken and he quite rightly said well you, you can't take the aircraft um, I you know I just out of curiosity in chat I, I I asked him you know why what what the logic was why, why did the nose gear door which is not an electrical component need to be bonded and as quick as a flash he came back to me and said well if you fly and the aircraft struck by lightning it could weld the nose gear doors closed and you won't be able to get the gear down now whether he's right or not uh, who knows um, but I have to say it sounded extremely plausible and uh, and was was reason enough for me to uh, to quite happily sit and wait over a cup of tea while he uh, while, while he got this this bonding jumper fixed. The uh, the chapter and verse anyway on bonded bonding jumper installations is given there in in eleven one eighty nine of um, of AC forty three, and it says bonding jumpers should be made as short as practicable and installed in such a manager a manner that the resistance of each connection does not exceed 0.003 ohm. The jumper should not interfere with the operation of movable aircraft elements such as surface controls, nor should normal movement of these elements result in damage to the bonding jumper. I am told by engineers that actually this particular bonding jumper is um, is quite susceptible to wear and tear, so um, so perhaps guys on on you on future walkarounds, it's it's worth just giving a little check of this. 
so back to the back to the subject that the, the fix we we don't know of a fix yet it's it's still early days um boeing will have to identify a fix and then issue a service bulletin after uh, the, the SB has got approval from the FAA and the service bulletin will contain detailed steps for engineers to perform the, the rectification work and then hopefully the uh, the MAX fleet can continue to fly um, with, with no further issues. Okay, that's it from me. Um, just a short one uh, that this was, but as ever, if you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. It all helps get visibility of these videos on uh, on YouTube. Thanks very much.